Well, Deb Murphy filed this report for Sierra Wave Media. Bishop City Council accepted the tone of the Planning Commission's Medical Marijuana Cultivation Ordinance, added a few tweaks of its own, and appears to have a consensus, minus one, on allowing the cultivation of medical marijuana within Bishop City limits. Now, the final ordinance will have its first reading at the Bishop City Council's January 11th meeting. That'll be in enough time to get the land use regulation on the books by the March 1st, 2016 deadline. Now the Bishop City Council opted not to take a chance on losing its ability to regulate cultivation by missing that deadline. Now just last week, Inyo County Board of Supervisors chose to hold off on a county regulation on the advice of rural county representatives of California legislative analyst Paul Smith who maintain the deadline may be legislatively removed. Now Bishop City Council members ran the gamut from Joe Pexy's it's a gateway drug to Karen Schwartz's desire to remove layers of regulation. After more than an hour of discussion, Bishop City Administrator Jim Tatum went through a checklist to test the consensus waters. The final ordinance still subject to possible wordsmithing should look something like this. Outdoor cultivation is still banned. Indoor is OK within limits. Now, multifamily residences were added to single family homes as approved dwellings. The 600 foot, 600 foot buffer zones, the current state regulation was kept in. Households with occupants under 18 can grow medical marijuana, as Mayor Pat Gardner said allow parents to be parents. Now the sections defining when cultivation becomes a public nuisance stayed in. Permitting will follow the pattern of business licenses going through department heads. Now said Jim Tatum, enforcement will be reactive, not proactive. Complaints would go through either the Bishop Police Department or the Building Department. Now Planning Commissioner H Hank Trucio brought up the issue of who would be inspecting the grow sites? The Planning Commission had been adamant that the Bishop Police Department would not have the power to inspect a home cultivation operation on 24 hour notice. Tatum said that would depend on the nature of the complaint that triggered an inspection. Now, the longest debate centered on how much is too much. The sample ordinance presented by Bishop City Attorney Ryan Jones at the commission meeting December 1st restricted the area occupied by the plants to 25 square feet. The commission enlarged that to 100 square feet, about the size of a small bedroom. The council compromised settling on 50 square feet or the state's limit of six mature and 12 immature plants. Bishop City Council avoided getting bogged down in a long debate over the validity of medical marijuana, accepting that opinions on its value were just as split as those on whether it was a gateway drug to more youthful, lethal drug use. As Bishop City Council member Jim Ellis observed, things are changing. Now, currently without an ordinance banning cultivation, grow sites are legal within city limits. Schwartz asked if there were any issues surrounding cultivation. Tatum said no. Interim Police Chief Ted Steck said the big challenge was validating if somebody needs medical marijuana. The Planning Commission answered that challenge simply. Need is determined by physicians, not the police department. Well, if you'll forgive me, some ne'er-do-wells sprayed graffiti in the Crowley Lake area. A press release from the Mono County Sheriff's Department states that on Saturday, graffiti was discovered spray painted on a boulder near McGee Creek Road in Crowley Lake. Now, the vandalism on public lands managed by the Bureau of Land Management. Now, that press release notes this defacement of public lands shows disrespect for our beautiful landscape and disregard for the law. And you're asked to take a look at that photo. And if you know who is responsible for this, please notify the Mono County Sheriff's Office at 760-932-7549. Or if you prefer to remain anonymous, you can report online at monosheriff.org. I will note that other pictures were provided by the Mono County Sheriff's Office and had CDD. But we're not showing those so as not to give the criminals any more publicity. Well, Deb Murphy filed this story for Sierra Wave Media. There's a discouraging cliche that no good turn goes unpunished. 
Mike Patterson of Sierra Life Flight found that out this week when the agency formed to assist emergency medical services in San Bernardino, Inyo, and Mono counties nearly put the brakes on the air ambulance services attempt to help out Southern Inyo Hospital after losing its emergency room physicians. Now, when Southern Inyo Hospital lost its emergency physicians, Sierra Life Flight stepped in with Patterson bringing a paramedic and nurse from the company's Bishop home base to Lone Pine. The idea was to provide emergency services no longer available in Southern Inyo since the ambulances provided by the volunteer fire departments in Independence, Lone Pine and Olancha were only staffed with EMTs. Now the company regularly flies patients needing advanced care from both Northern Inyo and Southern Inyo hospitals. Now, since the situation wasn't covered in Inland County's Emergency Medical Agency 449 page protocol manual, EMS Administrator Tom Lynch told Patterson he couldn't fly his fixed wing airplane out of Lone Pine. Patterson told his story, hoping for help at Tuesday's Inyo County Board of Supervisors meeting. Now, following a conference call with ICEMA staff, Patterson and Inyo Supervisor Matt Kingsley last Friday, the decision was reached that Sierra Life Flight could fly out of Lone Pine, but the agency would have to come up with a protocol. It did, but Patterson told the supervisors it was too restrictive. We added our paramedics to Lone Pine, the volunteer fire department's roster, Patterson noted. There were no regulations that restricted what we're doing, but ICEMA is trying to put one in place. It's a roadblock. Now, the new transport policy applying only to Inyo County complicates an already complex situation, even drawing a line at the Cottonwood Creek Bridge so EMS providers know whether the patient goes to Northern Inyo Hospital or Ridgecrest Regional Hospital. Now, Patterson addressed the Inyo board during the public comment period designated for items not on the meeting agenda. Questions directed to Patterson were put to a stop by Inyo County Council Margaret Kemp Williams. Lone Pine resident Earl Wilson suggested a special meeting to avoid Brown Act nuances. We need to continue to get ICEMA on board, said Matt Kingsley, volunteering himself and Inyo County Chief Administrative Officer Kevin Caruncio to continue those discussions before the board resorted to a special meeting. Now, the Southern Inyo Hospital Board is working to reopen the hospital's emergency room, but has work to do before the closure plan filed with the state can be rescinded. Well, let's go to some happier news. June Mountain opened on Saturday. Here's a cool video from June Mountain on opening day. Hey guys, June Mountain is now open for the 15-16 winter season. We got six inches of new snow and there's another storm on the way. and smooth. Bend your knees. Good job, buddy. We thank Abigail and the crew at June Mountain for that. Go to June. It's a fun place to uh, ski and ride. We'll be back with uh, more information.